And here's a little more in depth of what you can do. There's the animation curve. You can see that car is just following right along. Welcome to Learning MoGraph for Fusion. Let's get started. All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode about MoGraph for Fusion. I just got back from NAB 2017, and I have to tell you, I had a blast. I was hanging out at the LumaForge Faster Together stage, did a presentation on Fusion, but got to see so many other presentations. I am super pumped. Anywho, that presentation should be coming up uh, hopefully soon. And uh, you can see what we talked about, basically just kind of give an overview, stepping into Fusion, how it relates to After Effects. And I just discovered something yesterday that I'm super pumped about, and that is auto-orientation. So if you're familiar with After Effects and you do some animation along a motion path, right? You kind of throw a little square, a little circle, and kind of animate it. But you want to be able to orient it to a motion path. And that's kind of perplexed me in Fusion for a long, long time, until now. So now we figured out a way how to do it. Plus that, not only that, but linking other versions, if you will, to kind of give an echo effect. Fusion has this really cool node called the duplicate node. And it allows you to kind of make echoes, if you will, of, of, a, of an animation. You can offset it in time. Um, there's a lot of cool things you can do with it. But if you want to be able to have like multiple echoes with different colors or different parameters, you really can't do that. So I, I set out to figure out how to do that. Let's just play what I have. So as you can see here, I've got this one ball that's being animated. and I've animated just that yellow ball kind of on some position. There is rotation as well. But I just wanted you to see how I can get this these other two balls to follow it. And basically it's just offset in time. So one animation curve, which is this transform node right here. As you can see, that one is being animated. And the rest follow. So if I adjust and change the orange ball, that yellow ball, everything else follows. And I can control the distance of the, of the time delay between each one. Um, right now it's a manual process, so I'll have to go to each node and do it, but I'll probably look into making it a one single plugin later on. But anyhow, I'm pretty excited. And just to show you that I have the auto orientation working, let's, uh, let's see what we got here. Here are some arrows doing the same thing. These are offset in time and offset in position. So here we go. Our arrows are following our motion path. No, no rotation animation. Let's come over here to our tools. Now this looks like it's got uh, keyframes on it, but it just has a modifier attached to it. So it's following the path of our motion. Pretty, pretty pumped. I don't think I've seen um, anybody talking about auto orientation. Now we're in 2D, we're not in 3D, so I need to jump into 3D to start experimenting with that. And here's a little more in depth of what you can do. Now, there's some car collisions happening and so forth, but I just wanted you to see taking this car and sending it along a path. And as you can see, we have one car only. This is only just one car, one asset. That's the beauty of working in nodes is that um, you can just kind of keep repurposing and reusing the nodes over and over and over again. Nice, efficient way of, uh, of using assets. So we have one car. We've added a little, just a real quick, some mask to give it some headlights. We've taken this car, we've animated it. There's the animation curve. And the car is just following along the curve, right? I mean, I can come over here and let's just drastically change this. You can see that car is just following right along. So this is gonna snap really bad, but. So there you go, the car's following the curve. Let's undo that. Then we've taken the same asset, and we just piped it through a background node just to give it uh, some purple. We can change this to any color we want to. We've linked the transform, so it's following this transform. We've merged it. Also, just so you know, put a duplicate. So here's this. Here's where I use the duplicate node, right here. And this duplicate node is great because I made a copy, and then I offset the time. And there you go. We have cars following each other. Pretty cool. Made it quick down dirty road. Add some little vignettes, of course, through a glow, and I don't think I've got anything with the brightness just yet. But very cool, I think, um, especially when you start getting into animation and wanting things to fly around, and you do not want to have to be, be animating the, the angle of the rotation. So we're going to walk through how to set this up. Not only that, but to kind of uh, also do this echo effect, if you will, where things will follow, right? Kind of have this cool little animation 
So you only need to animate one, one layer, and you link up the other ones by using modifiers, and away we go. Let's just, real quick, to show you, all of these are just controlled by this one mask. Now I'm going to come over here to the corner radius and just bring this down. Now we got squares, right? So let's uh, let, let this render. So you can see I did animate the rotation of this one, the one yellow, but the other ones just follow. I think that's really, really cool. Here we go. So you can see the squares coming in, boop, bumps, rolls over. All the other squares follow in line. Auto rotation. Pretty, pretty sweet. All right. Let's do something, huh? Shall we? Okay, let's close this. Let's uh, make a new composition. Now, we're going to try to keep this simple so we understand what, what we're doing, right? Basically, idea what we want to do. Let's go ahead and create a background node. Throw it up into our viewer. Let's just change the color to something nice and funky. All right, so let's just add a rectangle mask to this. And let's make this nice little rectangle. I hit fit. Okay, so let's just bring this in. Let's just animate this. So what I want to do is keep this rectangle in the center position. So I'm going to add a transform node. Let's view that. Now with this transform node, I can move this however, wherever I want to, right? So let's do that. We're going to animate this, go to the center, double click, set a keyframe. Let's just move it out here, off screen, and let's go forward about 12 frames. And we're just going to bring it in, right? So simple animation, boop, go forward uh, 22. Let's just add another keyframe so it stays static. So it comes in, stays, and then it will fly out. There you go. There we go. We can move this handle up. And same thing for this, and we'll kind of, maybe we'll just adjust this just to give it some nice curvature, right? All right, so I'm going to hold the Apple key or Command key on a Mac. Click and drag. Now I've set my render bar. So I'm just going to see what we got here. Here we go. We get some simple animation. We can go to our spline, our spline view. We'll hit F4, go full frame. This little four arrows will kind of square this up nice and full for us so we can see. We're going to zoom out a little bit. Let's just select all our keyframes. Shift S. Now we kind of have this ease in, ease out curved. Okay. We're going to hit Select these two inside ones, hit F for flatten. There we go. Now they kind of stay, and they boom. I'm going to select this first landing keyframe, hit the T key. It's going to bring this tangent out. There we go. Same thing. Select this outgoing keyframe and extend this tangent out a little bit. There we go. All right, simple animation, right? So how do we get this to orient? Okay, so let's just work with one. <clears throat> okay, so something to note here. We've got our transform node. Here's our motion path. Now, when we create a motion path, it loads it in the modifier stamp. Why does it do that? Well, it, it's making it available to all the other nodes out there. So once it throws this motion path into, into this modifier, it just does it automatically. You have access to it. You can do things with other nodes to this path, which just becomes a very powerful way of working, especially in nodes. Um, so one thing I do want to mention is that you know, you're deep into animation. You've got multiple nodes, hundreds of nodes even. You don't want to be working with path 1, path 2, path 3, or path 50. So name that path. So select it, F2. Let's name it Rect Path, right? That's our rectangle path. Name it whatever you want. But name it, of course, if I can spell, that'd be great. And that way you know what it is you're going after. All right, so let's go back to our tools. And on our angle, we're going to right-click on the angle, and we're going to say Connect to Rect Path Heading. Now let's play this and see what happens. Well, there you go. Auto orientation. Just like that, now your rectangle is orienting along its motion path. Let's come here. Let's just change this, right? Just so we know we're not going crazy. Oops, let's not add keyframes. There we go. Let's just bring this up here. Now we've created this really drastic move. There we go. 
So it's rotating as the motion path is moving. Perfect. This is huge, just like that. So there we go, auto orient along a path. Great, so I wanna be able to do this again. Let's go ahead and name our transform. All right, so we'll call this XF control. All right, this is our main one. I mean, we can call it main if you want. Let's do that, I mean, sounds like you wanna change the name of that, so let's go ahead and do that. Cool, XF main, right? That's our main animated motion path. Let's do the same thing again. So we're gonna copy these and paste it. Actually, I don't need this rectangle. I just need this background. Let's just change the color of this background. Let's go something like that. Take the same rectangle, drop it in there. There we go. All right, let's add transform node, bring it underneath. Okay, so what are we gonna do now? Um, well, let's go ahead and merge these two together just so we can see what we're doing. Let's select this transform node. Let's go to our center. We're gonna right click on the center and we're going to say modify with offset position. Offset position. Now we're going to go here and right click on position. We're going to connect it to what are we going to, our path, the one we created and named position. So there we go. Right away, we have this guy following our path exactly, but it's offset, which is great because now we can actually control where, how, when. So let's zero out our offset. So now we've zeroed out our offset. This guy is following exactly in the same position as our master control, our main transform node. So we do want to offset it, but we have two ways of offsetting. We can offset the position, right? So as you saw here, we can come in here and go 0.5. So now he's way up there. Let's bring that down. Let's add a, another zero. So now he's hovering right above. Um, another way we can offset, obviously we can flip these positions and use all these different things here. We can offset in time, which is, I think, really cool. So we're going to position time offset. We're going to bring it back. Let's just go back negative 1 or maybe negative 2. And let's see what that does. So great. Now we can control time and position offset. So let's go back to our tools. We're still in this transform. And now we need to adjust the angle. So we're going to right-click on the angle. We're going to modify with calculation. Go to modifiers tab, open up calculation. First operate operation operand. I'm not sure what this is, but we're going to right-click on that. And now we're going to say connect to our path, our main path. What are we connecting to? The heading. Now we've got auto-oriented along a path. Okay, so one thing to note though is the orientation is now moving and reacting to the path, but the time offset is not behaving like we have. So as you can see here, this time offset is at zero, so it's reacting. It's in sync. The rotation is in exact sync with our orange one. So the blue one or the cyan one is in exact sync with the orange one. We, we want it to be in sync with the time offset of our position. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click in here, hit the equal sign, hit enter. Now we're just going to pick with the, pick whip this to our time offset. So now they are matched. So now it reacts accordingly. And there we go. We've auto-oriented our orange rectangle to the motion path and reusing the same rectangle mask created a new asset and connected that transform to our first animation curve. So we're animating once and now we're just connecting additional. And you can just keep adding and adding these as needed. So let's go ahead and do something different. Let's go to our transform. Let's name our transform, right? We call this one. So we know what that is, right? I'm going to come back over here to my offset position. I'm going to reset this to zero. I'm going to select my merge, Command T. It's going to swap the input. So there we go kind of have this cool follow action. Now it's different from the duplicate node again because I can control the color of this uh, secondary echo or or also I can add a displacement to change it. So there's a lot of different things that I can do um, in between this rectangle on the background, the background and the transform. So that way I can actually change the size of that, right? I can do a lot of different things to kind of give it its own uniqueness, um, if you will. I can make it longer, smaller, shorter, all sorts of interesting things that just kind of help 
keep things not looking so uniform. That's it. I hope you guys enjoy this. I uh, this is for me. This is really huge. Being able to um, connect things, move things around, and in this case, create these cool little echoes. So you can just keep stacking these things. You can you saw what I did with the cars, but really, it's unlimited and. Uh, using the modifiers, right? Right clicking, using the connect to, uh, modifying with, very, very, very powerful in Fusion. And I hope that uh, we can go further next time and explore more modifiers. But thanks again, guys, and talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, we learned something. So take what you learned and make it better.